Now, the CPA exam focuses mainly on this one right here called a financial statement audit. What is a financial statement audit? That's where you go out to the company and you pick up management's financial statements. Now, these are management statements. In other words, management is responsible for the presentation. Management is responsible for the content. Our job as an auditor, should we decide to accept it, is to obtain sufficient, appropriate audit evidence, enough good audit evidence, so we can give an opinion on management's representations. So that is our goal as an auditor. We're called an external, independent objective. We have to be independent, objective unbiased, neutral. You can't own stock in the company or you can't do that audit because you're not independent. So a financial statement audit is basically an examination or an audit for the purpose of giving an objective opinion as to the fairness of financial statement presentations. So let's break that down. What is a financial statement audit? It's an examination or an audit. So it's an audit it is an audit for the purpose of giving an objective opinion. You're giving an objective, unbiased, neutral, clear mental attitude opinion. Because when you go out and pick up, whose statements are these? Management. When you pick up management statements, you are giving an opinion on all this brown stuff, right? How appropriate. So our opinion covers only this brown stuff. The front stuff, this is called other information. This is the stuff that management puts in there. We have a responsibility to look it over, read it, make sure it's reasonable, but our opinion really covers this. Because our whole purpose of this is to give this audit opinion, which says, in our opinion, the statements referred to above presents fairly in all material respects the financial position of Exco as of 1231X1, the results of its operations in conformity with U.S. GAAP. So we're giving an opinion on GAAP. Are these statements presented fairly in conformity with United States generally accepted accounting principles? So in order to do an audit, it's an examination or an audit for the purpose of giving what we call an objective, unbiased, neutral opinion. We're giving an opinion because these statements are not ours, they're management's. And when you give an opinion, it doesn't say it's perfect, it says it presents fairly based on materiality. And here's basically what it looks like. What it basically says is we're dealing with a concept called reasonable assurance. So let's say you look at the company's transactions. They have zero to $100 or zero to 100%. We're going to go out and determine some level of what we call materiality. Materiality just means how important or how significant the amount is in relation to the whole picture. Now, as far as materiality, a question they like on the CPA exam is, who determines materiality? Auditor's judgment. We decide how much work is enough because it's our opinion. Everything above that level of materiality is called the scope of our audit or the character of our examination. Also, the second paragraph in an unqualified opinion is called the scope paragraph. Hmm. So that talks about the stuff we looked at. Everything below that we blow off as immaterial, immaterial, immaterial. So you give it one of these, you blow it off and say, we're not going to look at it. So for example, why would you not look at this $3 item? Because the cost outweighs the benefit, it's immaterial. That's one of the basic elements for financial accounting too, what makes information useful, relevant reliability, what is overriding constraint, materiality, cost benefit. So same thing here in audit, this $3 item, it's immaterial because if the statements taken as a whole are presented fairly, in all material respects, that's fine. So even if there's a $3 item that's wrong, it's not going to present or uh, it's not going to negate the entire financial statements. So that's what we're really looking at to see whether or not we have this. Now, in looking at reasonable assurance, that's reasonable, that's absolute. You don't need absolute assurance. You need what? Reasonable assurance based on materiality, based on the cost-benefit principle. Also, while you're out there auditing, you're supposed to act with something called professional skepticism. And professional skepticism means you're a skeptic. You question and doubt everything. That's one of the things you have to do. And after the Enron, Sarba you know, Enron, Arthur Anderson mess, they came up with all these new rules called Sarbanes-Oxley, which created this group called the Peekaboo, the PCAOB, Public Company Accounting Oversight Board. And what it basically said is, when you go do an audit, come from the perspective where you assume the client may not be honest. That's called professional skepticism. You question it out everything. So when you go out to do an audit, your job is to go out and obtain sufficient, appropriate audit evidence. You're going to ask questions. How do I know this? How do I know that? I need sufficient, appropriate audit evidence. And you'd be professional skepticism. The problem is you carry that same skepticism home with you. 
You get home after work. Honey, I'm home. I missed you. How do I know you missed me? I need sufficient, appropriate, audit evidence to corroborate the fact that you, you know, and so on. So that's called professional skepticism. You question and doubt everything. That's what you're doing as a professional skeptic. That's part of what you need to do as you're out there actually auditing the information, as you are actually auditing these financial statements. And again, these are management's financial statements. So a financial statement audit is an examination or an audit for the purpose of giving an objective, unbiased opinion as to the fairness of what? Financial statement presentations. Presentations to whom? To creditors and investors. Investors want to know if I put money in the company, will I get my investment back? Will I get dividends? Will it appreciate? Creditors, if I loan you money, will I get my principal back? Will I get my interest? So that's what we're looking at. The key is study hard, don't get discouraged. Woo, do a little Michael Jackson walk. Come on down. I've been teaching almost 20 years after I left Deloitte & Touche. I've done this for many, many years, helped thousands and thousands of people accomplish their goal, which is to get through the exam.